Jesus' suffering on the cross is a picture difficult to understand. He was betrayed by a friend, arrested, and falsely sentenced to death, but Jesus never looked back. He kept going. Jesus could have avoided the cross, called down fire from heaven, or summoned legions of angels to rescue him, to save him. But Jesus was not interested in saving himself. He was all about saving you. Every detail of this torturous path to the cross was part of God's plan to bring you to Him. We're all broken. We've all messed up and have all made wrong choices. And no one had to teach us as a baby about anger and selfishness. We just came out that way. Sort of a sin covering. But on the cross, with His blood He shed, the Bible says Jesus blotted out our record of sin, nailing it to His cross. The blood of Jesus washes away our sin covering. And His blood is our ticket. Our ticket to enter through a new door, a forever relationship door with God. So what do we do with this great news? The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see, it's not enough to believe in Jesus with just your head. You must believe with your heart. Now, there's just one person alone at the foot of the cross. It is you. What will you say to Jesus? Say thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood for me. I'm giving you my heart today, Jesus. I do believe you died for me and that you were raised from the dead for me. Please give me a new heart and a new life right now. Jason Blood Church coming to you today. God bless each and every one of you. Taking a look at the book of Acts here, and, and we're going to see Paul deal with superstition, deal with people who are spiritual but not worshiping the true God and the idol worship that, that he found present when he was in Athens. You get saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Jesus, he died, he buried, he rose from the dead, he shed his blood for the remission and forgiveness of all your sins, past, present, future. It's a heart belief, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. You believe with your heart, you confess with your mouth to salvation. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, says, hey, it's not a work lest any man can boast. In other words, you can't earn yourself to heaven. God did all the work. Get saved today by the blood of Jesus Christ. So Paul at Athens was saying things that was new, that were new to the people of Athens. They hadn't encountered or heard it. Verse, um, verse 20 says, For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears, we would know there." Therefore, what these things mean. So they wanted an explanation for what Paul was talking about Jesus. Paul then, at verse 22, stood in the midst of the Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. Verse 23, For as I passed by and behold your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. Paul goes on in verse 24 to say, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. See, men like to erect temples and statues and graven images and, and basically ignorant worship of idolatry. Let's continue to read verse 25. Neither is worshiped with man's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breathe and all things. God doesn't need man. We certainly know that. Verse 26, And hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their inhabitation. Verse 27, That they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. So verse 29, if we go down to here, For as much then as we are the offspring of God, he created us all. We ought not to think that the Godhead, that's the three in one, the Trinity, is like unto gold or silver or stone or graven by art and man's devices. And so he wants godly things 
that to honor him, to be in our prayer and our reading of his word, not in graven images, not of gold and silver and stone and, and, and art that you often see in some of these, these churches that don't have right doctrine or these buildings or just in other ways um, that man raises up other, other things. God is, our, God is a jealous God. He is also a God that is a raging fire, and he wants all to repent and come to him. And Paul left, you know, here at verse 33. Um, so in verse 32, you can see here, And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, We will hear thee again of this matter. But people did get saved in verse 34, so it was a positive event, even though uh, he was mocked for the, talking about Jesus Christ's resurrection and the salvation thereof, as not all did accept. But this is the early, certainly Paul here in Athens, and um, mentioning the importance of worshiping God the right way and not through idol worship. God bless. If you need your prayer requests, leave them. And have a great, great day.